Hello everyone, welcome back to Listen to Rosie, and today it's a rainy day. I wonder if you could hear that thunder. So, today's theme of this episode is a storybook. It's about this book called The Journey, Big Panda and Tiny Dragon by James Norbury. I hope I'm saying that right. Um, this book is actually, I'm borrowing it from my older sister and she lent it to me to read and it is a really good story and it has really cute, um, illustrations. Anyway, so I hope you enjoy this episode. Just get cozy, sit back, relax. Hi, sorry, this is Editing Rosie. I'm going through and editing this. And I realize it's kind of a rough recording because I struggle to read the story. I think I have dyslexia, but who knows? I want to give you a little warning, but either way, I hope you enjoy the story. The Journey For those on their own journey There was a temple high in the mountains, surrounded by a vast forest and a deep still lake. The temple had seen better days, but it didn't matter to the two friends who made this ancient place their home, Big Panda and Tiny Dragon. During the day, they would travel high into the mountain peaks and explore the thick, tangled forest, hoping to catch a glimpse of the creatures that lived there. One winter evening, under a full moon, Tiny Dragon turned to his friend and said, This place is incredible, Big Panda. The trees, the mountain, the birds, and the animals, they're all so magical. We're so lucky. So why do I feel like something is missing? Why do I feel incomplete? Big Panda nodded and took a sip of tea. That is a good question, little one, and the answer is simple yet difficult. Sleep now. Tomorrow is a new day, and we'll see what we can do. Big Panda awoke early but his friend was already up watching the sun rise over the mountains. He seated himself on the rock next to Tiny Dragon. You are unhappy, my little friend, said Big Panda. That's okay. It happens to all of us. The important thing is is that you have noticed something is wrong. Problems should not stop us, said Big Panda. They are simply nature's way of letting us know we need to explore a different path. You have shared how you feel, said Big Panda. Sharing our lives, both the good and the bad, is what makes us closer and lets us help each other. I'll help you, said Tiny Dragon, if you ever need it. You help me every day, said Big Panda, just by being yourself. They crossed the old bridge that led to the temple's garden. Change, said Big Panda, even if you don't know where it'll lead, is better than stagnation. In some ways, the mind is just like the garden. It needs your care, attention, and effort. Left on its own devices, it will soon become overrun with weeds, and there will be too many weeds that the flowers can't grow. Tiny Dragon nodded. But how do I pull up the weeds? I will help you, said Big Panda. Remember, little one, together we can do anything. They left the garden and walked to the cliff that overlooked the great river. After settling himself on the rock, Big Panda turned to Tiny Dragon. We cannot just sit here and hope that the weeds will go away on their own. We must take action. Sometimes something needs to change and that requires effort. We shall go on a journey across the river. They turned to the temple to close the window shutters and block the the broken doorway, for it rained a lot in the mountains, and Tiny Dragon did not want his things to get wet while they were away. When he finished, he placed a few of his most prized possessions into his little cart and went outside to meet Big Panda. When Big Panda saw the overstuffed cart, he slowly shook his head. We cannot take all of this over the river. But I need these things, said Tiny Dragon stroking the picture of his grandpa dragon. Everything you need, said Big Panda, is already inside of you. Tiny Dragon paused. Deep down, he knew Big Panda was right. 
But he had one small question. Can I take my tea set? Of course, said Big Panda. There is nothing wrong with enjoying the fruits of the world. We just need to make sure that we do not lose ourselves in them. And so Tiny Dragon clambered up onto Big Panda's back, and they followed the rocky trail that led them to the mountains down to the river, leaving the old temple far behind them. They traveled for many days through the dense forest that covered the mountains. They passed crashing waterfalls and deep, dark pools. They saw colorful birds and the glimpse of a small deer fleeting through the towering bamboo. One evening, just as the stars were starting to come out, they arrived at the banks of the great river. We'll stop here tonight, said Big Panda. We can light a fire and listen to the river. And I'll make some tea, said Tiny Dragon. Tiny Dragon collected some sticks, and soon water was heating over a crackling fire. Tiny Dragon poked the fire with a stick. Big Panda, I was wondering, why don't I get the same pleasure of collecting sticks now that I did when I was a very tiny dragon? I used to love choosing the best sticks, brushing off the leaves and placing them in my basket. Panda thought for a moment. Our thoughts can lead us away from ourselves. When you were young, the task of gathering sticks probably took all your attention. When you are focused in that way, your mind tends to not wander and that creates a sense of inner, inner stillness, from which arises the feelings of joy and peace. Tiny Dragon pondered, perhaps you're right. When I was collecting them just now, I was thinking about whether the journey would really help. I was not really thinking about the sticks at all. Stillness is always there to be found, said Big Panda. And in that peace, you may start to find yourself again. Tiny Dragon felt that Big Panda was only reminding him of something he already knew deep down inside. And if you forget yourself, just look up at the stars in the sky or listen to the pines wavering in the evening breeze. They're doing what nature is intended in this moment. In the morning, while they were breakfasting on bamboo and berries, Big Panda noticed Tiny Dragon was looking worried. What is it, little one? Tiny Dragon looked up. I'm afraid, he said quietly. I don't want to cross the river. It's natural to be afraid, said Big Panda, but sometimes we must carry on anyway. Fear will not stop you dying but it may stop you from living. They watched the sun break over the dark mountains. Something needs to change, my little friend, says Big Panda. But if the change was easy, it probably wouldn't make much of a difference. Great change requires great effort. Tiny Dragon finished his berry. You're right, he said. Crossing the river does scare me, and so I'll be scared when I do it. But I'm going to cross it regardless. Together, they searched the shoreline until Big Panda found what he was looking for. The weather can be fierce here, he said, pointing at some trees that have come down from the storm. If we use bamboo to make rope and lash together the trunks, we'll have a raft in no time. Despite how he felt inside, Tiny Dragon gave a big smile and puffed out his little chest. I'll get the bamboo and you collect the logs. By the afternoon, they had built a small raft. It was not much to look at, but it would carry them across the river. I enjoyed that, said Tiny Dragon, taking in what they had made. And yet, said Big Panda, gathering the bamboo is not so much different from gathering sticks. Sometimes good and bad are just ways of looking at the world. As the sun started to set, Big Panda dragged the raft into the shallows of the river. They both climbed on board, and Tiny Dragon used his bowl to push them off the bank. They let the current take the raft for a while and carry them down the river. This raft is a little like us, said Big Panda. Where it's been doesn't determine where it's going. Surely the past makes a difference, says Tiny Dragon. You're right, said Big Panda. The past is like a story that tells us how we arrived where we are, but you can start writing a new story right now. Tiny Dragon fell silent and thought about Big Panda's words. Then, from nowhere, a deep rumble shook the land, and Tiny Dragon felt spots of rain and a chilling wind. A storm is coming, said Big Panda. We should make for shore. But the current was stronger than it looked, and despite their efforts, they couldn't steer the boat toward the bank. Tiny Dragon started to panic, 
big panda just calmly paddled. Aren't you scared of the storms? asked Tiny Dragon. Maybe once, said Big Panda, but I've survived them all. Dark clouds loomed over them, and rain fell hard and icy. The raft began to spin and buck, and the downpour made the wood cold, slippery, and wet. Big Panda laid out flat to make himself as stable as possible, and with a large paw, he tucked Tiny Dragon into his fur to keep him safe and warm. Tiny Dragon was too scared to talk. He screwed his eyes closed and clung as hard as he could. Then suddenly he remembered his tea set. Opening one eye, he could see it lying on the raft, the cloth wrap caught on a sharp piece of wood. He reached out his hand to grab it, just as the raft banged against a large rock. The tea set broke free and tumbled into the water. As he watched it vanish into the black, churning depths, he felt as his heart had followed it. What was he doing? What was the point of all this? He had never felt like this in his life. He buried his face into his hands and sobbed. And Big Panda heard Tiny Dragon's pain. He wanted to help him, hold him, and tell him it would be okay. But he was exhausted and lacked the strength to speak. And if he loosened his grip, they would be washed into the waters. All he could do was listen and do his best to keep them safe. Even the greatest storm will pass. By the morning, the storm has blown itself out. The raft drifted aimlessly on the glassy, silent water. Panda felt the sun on his back and opened his eyes. His fur was matted with salt and his body ached, but he was reassured to feel a tiny dragon's body curled under his fur. It wasn't long until his little friend awoke and crawled out into the morning air. We're safe! squeaked Tiny Dragon, and gave Big Panda a big hug. Where are we? I don't see the banks of the Great River. The storm raged all night, said Big Panda. We were swept into the ocean. Oh no, exclaimed Tiny Dragon. We're going to die. This is not where we chose to be, said Big Panda, but it is where we are. And if you try to forget about what has happened, just for a moment, and look around, you might see that this is one of the most beautiful moments we've ever experienced. Tiny Dragon gazed at the endless ocean, stretching away in every direction. We have never been this lost, he sighed. If you feel lost, said Big Panda, just close your eyes. Hear the water lapping against the raft. Feel the sun on your skin and the breeze against your face. There you are. You'll find yourself soon enough. And Tiny Dragon tried. But in that stillness, all he could think about was how he had lost his treasured tea set and how they had no food or water and how far from home they were. So he did what he could think of and started paddling. Hours stretched into days. Each morning, the sun rose in a burning red over the mirrored ocean and there was no sign of land. One night, Tiny Dragon, weak from hunger and thirst, cr crawled up to Big Panda and snuggled into his fur. How could you be so calm, he asked. This could be the end. Big Panda pulled Tiny Dragon in close. Nothing is in our control, little one. Not really. I just trust in life to take us where we need to be. But what if I'm somewhere I don't want to be? asked Tiny Dragon. That does happen, said Big Panda, and of course, we can try to change our circumstances for the better, but some situations, like this one, we cannot change and we should try to accept them as they are. That acceptance would bring great peace. Tired and weak, Tiny Dragon fell asleep and Big Panda looked up at one of the most beautiful nights he had ever seen. Tiny Dragon awoke with a start. Although it was still dark, he could see that the raft had become beached on a sandy shore, which gleamed in white in the moonlight. Beyond it, the high mountains rose into the night. Tiny Dragon staggered to his feet. Big Panda, Big Panda, we're saved! 
Big Panda opened his eyes and looked into the expansion of the pale sand in the mountains beyond and smiled at Tiny Dragon. Come, little one, said Big Panda. Climb on my back and we'll go find some food and water. They didn't have to travel far before they found a patch of thick grass by a winding stream. Tiny Dragon collected some sweet red berries and there was even some young bamboo shoots. They sat by the water, eating and drinking and watching the sun rise over the ocean. I never imagined I'd be so grateful for food and drink, said Tiny Dragon, munching on a berry. It's funny, said Big Panda, how simple things, when seen with fresh eyes, can often bring the most happiness. Tiny Dragon nodded. So how far back to the temple, he asked. I think... I've learned what I need to, and I'm never going to take the, my life for granted again. Big Panda put a large paw on his friend's shoulder. We cannot go home, he said with the last star disappearing into the dawn light. This is a new world, somewhere where we've never been, and somewhere from which we can never return. No, squeaked Tiny Dragon. It can't be. We have to go home. What about the temple, my things, my friends, and all my favorite places? Oh, we can't stay here. We can't. Big Panda pointed to the stream next to them. Do you see the way the water travels around the rocks, Tiny Dragon? The obstacle is there, but the water is flowing around it, taking the gentlest path to its destination. We can be the same. Tiny Dragon looked up at Big Panda and tried to smile. Tried to see the wisdom in his words, but his heart was heavy. Inside, he had felt that he had lost everything. He was utterly empty. Big Panda offered a reassuring paw. We have gone astray, far from our home, but... If we have to be lost, said Big Panda, I'm glad it's with you. But Tiny Dragon found little comfort in Big Panda's words. His eyes fell to the stream but all he could see was the rock. Rain is coming, said Big Panda, looking up at the darkening sky. We should search for shelter. Tiny Dragon climbed onto Big Panda's back, and they began to ascend the mountain. The going was hard, and there was often no path to follow, and thick and tangled roots crawled across the forest floor. Sometimes it was too steep that they had to find another way. As Big Panda's paw slipped and slided on the thick mud, thunder cracked the sky open and the rain fell in great sheets that swept across the forest canopy. We must press on and find shelter, said Big Panda. This could continue for hours or even days. But Tiny Dragon did not speak. He did not feel the rain. He could barely hear Panda's voice. He felt alone and empty in a world that meant nothing. They journeyed for hours until the forest gave way to a bare expanse of, of rock that rose sharply toward the mountain summit. The rain was relentless, lashing the stones and cascading down the gullies. They struggled onward, but there was no relief. Just as the last of his strength was failing, Big Panda stopped at something. Look, Tiny Dragon, we can shelter between those rocks. But Tiny Dragon was silent. Big Panda made his way carefully across the sharp, slippery stone and managed to crawl into the cave formed by the cluster of huge boulders. They sat together and watched the rain. Then Big Panda turned to Tiny Dragon. You can talk to me, little one, if you want to. I make no difference to anything, said Tiny Dragon. Big Panda smiled at his friend. You make all the difference to me. I know it's hard to understand right now, said Big Panda, but the universe has placed us exactly where we need to be. Tiny Dragon looked up, tears in his eyes. But we're a hundred miles away from home. We don't know where we are, and we have nothing. Big Panda took tiny, wet dragon into his arms and squeezed him tightly. It's true, he said. 
and yet somehow we are complete. Tiny Dragon stood up and walked out of the cave and into the storm. Big Panda knew he had to let him go. Tiny Dragon walked through the downpour with no idea where he was going. How could he be complete? Everything that made him who he was has been taken away. He had no idea for how long he walked for, but he was so cold and tired, he knew he had to stop. An overhanging rock was creating the smallest of dry patches and he staggered over to it, dropped to the ground and stared at the endless gray skies. Then he saw it. Hanging from a single strand of spider silk, a leaf. It was catching just a little bit of the storm's dying breath, its earthen hues catching the pale sun as it broke the clouds. So delicate, so beautiful. The world in a moment. Time fell away as he watched it turn. Tiny Dragon couldn't remember seeing anything so captivating, so pure perfect and delicate. He began to feel that the emptiness inside of him was like a cup waiting to be filled. Filled with all the wonders of what the world could offer. There was pain, of course, but there was so much beauty. You see, don't you? Tiny Dragon looked around to see Big Panda, soaked through but smiling. I, I think I do, he replied. They watched the sun disappear behind the mountains as the night settled all over the land. Tiny Dragon spoke for the first time in hours. Big Panda, he asked, what is the universe? I like to think it's our friend, said Big Panda, if we allow it to be. Tiny Dragon awoke early in the morning. Although the rain still swept across the mountains, where he had previously seen hopelessness and defeat, he now saw opportunity and beauty. We should be on our way, said Big Panda. I don't know how much longer we could last out here. They had no food or water, so they braced themselves against the cold and the wind and continued toward the summit. Look, said Tiny Dragon, I can see the top. And sure enough, out of the swirling mist appeared a peak of jagged rock. Big Panda gathered his strength and they struggled up the last stretch. And as they crested the final rise, Tiny Dragon was lost for words. For beyond, a broad river snaked its way through a magnificent forest valley. This, said Big Panda, this is where our journey has been leading us. And this, ti grinned Tiny Dragon, <laughs> this is where we'll make our new home. Hunger and cold were forgotten as Tiny Dragon sat motionless, soaking in the beauty that laid before him. Eventually, Big Panda tapped him on the shoulder with a large paw. Come, he said. Let's head down and find some water and food. So the two friends made their way down into the jungle. It was more beautiful than Tiny Dragon could ever imagine. Colorful birds he had never seen, huge plants with flowers that he could bathe in, and strange beasts that crept silently through the undergrowth. Something caught Tiny Dragon's eye. Half buried in the soil was a jumble of broken pottery. After a little digging, Tiny Dragon found a rounded pot and two mismatched chipped little cups. Come on, he said, picking a few choice of buds off a bush. I recognize these leaves. They'll make a delicious tea. Let's celebrate. They seated themselves under the boughs of an ancient twisted tree and Tiny Dragon prepared a small fire. What are we celebrating? asked Big Panda. Us, said Tiny Dragon. It's been a long journey with many challenges, and we're both still here. That seems like a good reason to me. You know, said Tiny Dragon, I think it's the best tea set I've ever had. Why is that? asked Big Panda. It's because it's the one I have now. Tiny Dragon packed his tea set in a huge leaf and they picked their way along the winding trails and the dark, grueling streams. How are you feeling, little one? asked Big Panda. Tiny Dragon thought for a moment. 
I still feel some sadness at the loss of my friends and my home, and of course my tea set. But I think maybe I am learning to be accepting of things. It seems that the more I unclench my hand, said Tiny Dragon, the more the world seems to place into it. I've come to realize that it's not always the situation that makes me unhappy, but the way I think about it. The less I try to control the world, the freer I am to watch it play out in all its untamed wonder. Big Panda nodded his head in understanding. But despite having learnt so much, Tiny Dragon couldn't stop his mind occasionally wandering back to the things he'll never see again. How are you so wise, Big Panda? Big Panda paused for a moment. We all have wisdom inside of us, my little friend, but it's very quiet, gentle voice, so you might need to be very still to hear it. But you always seem to know the answers, said Tiny Dragon. Big Panda grinned. Well, I've made a lot more mistakes than you. Just then, as they were thinking about stopping for the day, they saw what looked like a structure in the distance. As they moved closer, they could see it was an ancient temple overgrown with trees and plants. There were no signs of past occupants, and aside from a few monkeys and birds, no one seemed to pay them very much attention. <laughs> Big Panda checked inside, and it seemed safe and sheltered. I think we may have found our new home. At night, they sat in the shadows of the ruined temple and drank tea from the spring water and fresh green buds. I don't think the world will ever be quite the way I want it to be, said Tiny Dragon. Some things I can never change. But I think maybe I've changed. So that things that I couldn't accept before, I'm starting to be okay with. I feel a bit like this cup, said Tiny Dragon. I've been through a tough time and... I feel like I've been damaged, but these cracks, he said, holding up the cup to the moon, are what let the light shine through. Tiny Dragon poured his friend another cup of tea and sat down next to him. Thank you, he said, patting Big Panda's head. What for? asked Big Panda. I went wrong so many times, and every time you were there for me, you never judged me, left me, or scolded me. I hope this time I've got it right. Big Panda hugged Little Dragon. As long as we're alive, said Big Panda, we'll keep making mistakes and end up getting lost. It's the nature of things. But as long as we're both here, we'll keep helping each other and we'll find our way. That night, Big Panda and Tiny Dragon slept deeply. Their tired, aching bodies rested safely in the ruins of the old temple. As dawn broke across the mountains, they were greeted by the most magnificent sunrise of a new day and a new beginning. There are so many unknowns and possibilities out there, said Tiny Dragon. Well then, said Big Panda, let's see how many we could try. The end of this journey. Okay, so I want to quickly read an author's note that he left in the back of this book. When I first set out to create the book, I decided to base it on the idea of a spiritual journey which starts not, not simply with discontent, but with the acknowledgement that the discontent and the desire to do something about it. The protagonist then goes on a journey of ups and downs, one minute looking up, another one another disaster. Some light at the end of the tunnel, then swiftly sucked out. I personally feel that this reflects my own experience of what I know which I hope adds a bedrock of authenticity to the tell. <laughs> this leads to a strange series of experiences that I often found myself so immersed in the process of expressing the character's emotional journey that my own feelings would begin to mirror those of Tiny Dragon, and sometimes even a Big Panda. Perhaps this is because their story, in many ways, is the retelling of my own. I purposely kept the book simple with only two characters. The scenery tends to mirror a tiny dragon's state of mind, where the bleaker he feels, the more barren the world becomes. I have endeav endeavored to always make the world appear beautiful, because it is, but our little hero's perception of the world fluctuates, and I have tried to make the reader's experience mi mirror that. 
Other aesthetics choices I've made, including the character's general move from left to right when things are progressing, are right to left when things are falling behind, apart. Hmm. I've also changed to a completely different paint palette when the characters land in a new world to instill a subtle sense that everything is different. I've also used toward the front of the book a Tori arch, which is a structure typically found on its way to a Japanese Shito temple, and which represents the passage of an from everyday material world into the most sacred spiritual one. It is my sincere hope that the story speaks to you, and if you find some of Tiny's of Tiny Dragon's struggle relatable, you may find some solace in the idea of change. A little scary is possible with patience and can lead to better things. So, I, when I read this book, um, I did relate to Tiny Dragon a lot and also to Big Panda with change and I guess this change has been a big topic lately and so it was comforting to like read the struggle and the beauty of it and I really I really love the book and the illustrations and I hope that you did too and you should really get the copy a copy of it because it's really good <laughs> anyway that was kind of a struggle to read with my dyslexia but I hope you are able to understand it enjoy it as well so that was it the little story time version of listen to Rosie um, thank you for joining me in this time and thank you for being here on this earth <laughs> I hope you have a good day, good night, or whatever it is. That's it for now. Bye.